So after I was stupid and shattered the first version of this knife that I love so dearly and had trained with, talk about that in a second, I had to find myself a replacement. But 1981, production Mark IIs had hit the store, and this is what you were getting. Same exact shape of grip, they just painted it all black. One of the awesome things about it that I do definitely consider an, an improvement is a sturdy reinforced nylon sheath, and this one actually comes with an awesome steel. And the steel is extra cool because it has this like chisel tip, so you could use it in the field and different kinds of surfaces and things for sharpening at different grades. So the sides of it are, are a little bit rougher than the flats. Yeah, I use this a lot for a lot of different knives. It comes in very, very handy. Still has the different lanyards and, and things like that. They got away. They got away from the whole, you know, that clip system for the old web belts, and they just went for a regular belt loop. And they added an extra strap for you know the top of the the grip compared to just the, the fold over thing. Because over time, especially those leather ones, they would just stretch out, and then they wouldn't retain your knife anymore. So again, the leather ones are attractive, but not not very functional. But yeah take a look at this thing okay they kept the serrations they moved them a little further north on the blade but two things they did which i really don't like first they eliminated the whole wasp wasting so it's a pretty straight blade and also by moving those serrations further forward they didn't leave me much cutting edge or at least much straight cutting edge and they made it out of 440 stainless steel, which was super popular in the early 80s, by the way. But it just isn't quite as good. It's stainless. That's awesome. And they kept that same kind of edge grind where there's no secondary bevel, but there's, there's no curvature, no belly to it or anything like that, no apple seeding or whatever that made you know these just so extra special. This is very flat, very machine made. But yes, they kept the stupid hypodermic thin tip so if you stabbed into something resistant, it would snap off. Okay, now, I broke that original blade. It took me a long time to find a new one, and boy, did I pay a premium when I found a new one, but I'm glad I found a new one. It was probably a good 10 years later that I went without one of these and had to deal with this. Or, or, let's talk about some other versions. Because I wasn't terribly keen on the new Mark II, I decided to try something a little different. And it was a, a product from Gerber in a similar line. They made a series of knives they called Guardians. And there was the original Guardian, which was a little tiny boot knife. And again, I wasn't terribly into little tiny boot knives, but I wish I would have got one because, yeah, they're very collectible now. And quite awesome. They had what they called a Guardian One, which is the size of a Mark One. So you're talking about a four-inch blade. And, well, I got myself the Guardian 2. So what's the difference? Well, between the two, no serrations and a slightly different shape of grip, okay? The entire series of Guardians, it's, it's just a little squarer, slightly different ergonomics, and, of course, a totally different pommel shape. Same size, length, blade, same lack of secondary bevel, so this one feels quite different for me, but I spent many years with it and just really learned to love it and like it. But because of that hypodermic tip, almost immediately, I snapped the tip off. However, I did manage to do a decent job of putting a new tip on. So catastrophe semi-averted. Now it has a pretty sturdy functional tip. Haven't damaged it again in all the years I've had it. And we're talking 1981. I got this late 1981. So yeah, I've had this one for a while. Put it to a lot of, well, use. We'll talk about that use in a second. What other versions of this knife do I have? Well, this would be an example of, well, you can see the the, the more modern 1980s stainless steel Mark II sheath that doesn't have the steel in it. But this one is, is different. They created the Command series. And they had a Mark I version and a Mark II series. So it was an edge and a half. 
it was designed to kind of look like that, you know, bayonet that was very popular during the Vietnam War. So, same grip, same 440 stainless steel, same nice, you know, no secondary bevel on the primary edge. And the primary edge does not have serrations. But weirdly, this is, this is just a bizarre design choice. So tell me if this makes any sense to you, because it doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, the false edge, which is sharpened, by the way, has, well, let me see if you can see it. That's serrated. Why? I don't know. I've never actually found a useful function for putting serrations up there. It's just strange. But it's kind of cool looking, and it was on sale, so I pick one up. Added it to my collection and my training routine, and it, it serves. It's it's a, got a little bit more mass in the blade because it doesn't have you know totally two bevels all the way down, so the balance is a little different. The weight's a little different, but yeah, it's quite handy. And you could arguably use this a little bit more as a utility knife, but yeah, the 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 angles of those edge bevels and things, it's just it's like a thirty degree edge. It may be razor sharp in certain applications, but in general field applications. No. And again, brittle steel. Would I try batoning or hacking with something like this? Especially with that rat tail tang going into an aluminum grip? No. So, yeah. Not really <laughs> what they were aiming for. But now, my first generation is actually, I picked up a couple of these because, you know, it happened. This is, this is the 20th anniversary 1986 reproduction which i wish i would have kept all the box and stuff with because i guess they're pretty valuable now but i picked up a couple of these and yeah this allowed me to experience the original narrow canted mark ii which i train with but still my favorite is the second generation the beefier straighter one let's talk about well what i've used them for training wise training wise all right, this is where all my knife enthusiast friends and probably a lot of my martial arts enthusiast friends are about to lose all respect for me because we're going back to, again, early, early 80s. And I was associating with a group of people who were part of, well, let's call it a movement, to introduce, well, new elements into military close quarters combat. And as part of that, I was investigating and, you know, sharing information with practitioners of Warango and other arts. Also training with a lot of vets at the time. But, yeah, this as a viable weapon for close quarters combat. And they kind of took it to some, well, outrageous extremes, including using this knife as a throwing knife. If you have one of these, any version of it, don't do that. This is fragile. How do I know? Yeah, the hard way. Also, if you're trying to throw it from the blade, unless you've blunted your edges on purpose, which don't, please God, don't do that, you're going to wind up bleeding pretty severely if you try to throw the knife this way. How do I know that? <laughs> Okay, this knife has probably done me more injury than any other knife style type in my collection. Let's just put it at that. But I had been studying, as I said, Tanto Jutsu and other martial arts, including Chinese dagger fighting and stuff like that, and some things that I was trading information, training techniques with some Huarango practitioners. So yeah, I learned some very interesting things, including some of the things they were trying to sell to the U.S. military back then in terms of the use of a knife like this is kind of a, a upgrade to that Sykes Fairburn. Now, this knife is actually, again, it's very well balanced, very comfortable in the hand. It's a very interesting length, I would say. Gives it a lot of usefulness for, well, some very questionable activities. The originals, let's talk specifically about second generation. This belly, actually makes it quite nice in the slash both in the forward and the reverse grip it, it can do some damage to flesh i, I guess we're never going to be monetized here 
If you can get past the super fragile tip, yeah. Penetration with this knife is phenomenal in, well, shall we say, soft targets. Now, with the second generation that's fairly straight, which then applies to the other generations after it reasonably well, yeah, it can be wielded in what they would call at the time a fencer's grip, thumb on the side, edges sideways, a handshake grip with the edges more vertical or more of a hammer grip. And it transitions very quickly and naturally between those. So you can use it to cut, slash, chop, stab, thrust in any conceivable technique or combination of techniques that you can use with knife fighting or crossover apply from well, swordsmanship. So that made it really appealing to me. Also, because of grip and point of balance, shifting it, twirling it between the forward grip and a reverse grip, either that hammer ice pick grip or retracting it along your forearm for close quarters action, whether you're dealing with you know left hand forward sorts of things, intercepting cuts, stabs, slashes, or something more very close and devastating, yeah. This can be a really, well, terrifying blade. Now, let's look back at that bent one. Well, in the fencer's grip, as I said, with the cant in the more this way position, yeah, it feels pretty good. If I flip it over, yeah, being able to do close quarters stabbing work with the blade kind of bent upwards, that feels, well, scarily good. But if I'm holding it in any kind of handshake grip or hammer fist, it, does, it, does, it feels out of line. But having that needle sharp tip and that belly in there for slashing, yeah, I still just really kind of like the elegance and kind of the weirdness of this knife while I recognize that it's, it's kind of delicate. In the reverse grip, well, as I pointed out, if I can't the blade that way, it does kind of lean to getting your palm behind it. This way, not quite as much. That's, that's very strange to be bent that way. And also retracting it along your arm for more concealment so your opponent can't really grab it, take it away from you very easily, being able to deploy it and use it for intercepting cut stabs. We'll talk about some of this in future videos, but really handy. Now, going to the more modern version, it just it loses so much of its feel. I mean, it's still basically the same grip. Similar balance, but not quite. Doesn't have that belly on it for the slashing as much. It, it's just, it's okay. If it's what I have to do with, be, it, it was functional for a while. But yeah, I'm glad I found another, another original, or at least second generation. And the other versions aren't, they're not bad. All right, let's, final note about versions. Recently, Gerber produced a new, new, new Mark II with a blackened blade. I took one look at it and decided I didn't want one. You could clearly see that severe secondary bevel grind. Now, I spent a decent amount of money on their, well, Fairburn knife. I got a modern version in stainless steel. The edge, the materials, the metal, it was all beyond horrible. Yeah, really turned me off to Gerber. Once upon a time, they used to be able to make a fantastic double-edged blade, razor sharp, no secondary bevel, but I think somewhere along the line they've just really lost it in terms of quality. And I hate to say that. I mean, I do have some Gerber folding knives. They're, they're pretty good, and I like them a lot. And maybe I'll review those in the future. But when it comes to fighting knives, yeah, I, I've since noticed that their new Gerber has kind of been discontinued. And we'll take a look again in the future, not only their folding knives, but I did pick up a couple of their Fixed blades, they're actually quite nice, but not the new Mark II. Kind of broke my heart. So who knows, maybe they'll come out with yet another generation, and it'll be awesome, we can hope. But 
Yeah, my questionable love of the Mark II series and the techniques that I've developed over time, hybridized to work with it in my own personal system. We'll talk about those in future videos. Maybe. It's pretty brutal content. However, yeah, um, hopefully this is some interesting insight into, well, a particular kind of blade that for whatever reasons has been just very near and dear to my heart and, yeah, nostalgia. Anyway, thanks you guys for watching. I hope this was reasonably interesting or at least entertaining, possibly at my expense. And I hope to see you back for, well, future videos.